some news. My name is Mike BK40. Today, we got a lot of news. We got some small news, we got some big news, we got some crazy news, we got some sad news. We got a little bit of everything today. It's kind of a mixed bag news today. First, I want to introduce my co host, my time stamped co host right here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here, for being here, for being, for being here. Yes, there we go. Today's date, July 8th, 2022. Time is before 3 p.m. Oh, it's early news today, boy. Mike can give you his big, thick news. That's right. Big, thick, thick on feelings. Starting off with a story that nobody could have seen coming. Nobody could have seen this coming. Elon Musk <laughs> has officially submitted his uh, request to terminate the contract that he has with Twitter in regards to the purchasing of uh, Twitter as a home. So he says in his in his legalese down here on page five, on paragraph two, it says, since then, Mr. Musk has provided numerous additional follow-up requests, all aimed at filling the gaps in the incomplete information that Twitter provided in response to his broad request for information relating to Twitter's reported monthly active user counts and reported estimates of false and spam accounts. So his main argument is that Twitter is not not reporting accurately the number of bots that are currently on the platform. Twitter has already put out numerous times that they've given him direct access to some of the user data. Uh, so they've they've released tons of information lately, of course, uh, about how they track bots and how they can who who they consider bots and how they how many they eliminate per day. It's like a million or something per day, uh, and it's not enough. It's not enough because he wasn't planning on buying this shit in the fucking first place. <laughs> he's happy enough with all his marketing manipul manipulation now, yes. But now he's kind of in a pickle. He's in a little bit of pickle. Now, we talked about this a long time ago uh, uh, when he first started talking, when he first started going in on uh, wanting to acquire Twitter. Uh, and one of the things that I mentioned was, um, uh, was uh, when you go into these deals where you're trying to acquire companies or do some kind of merger or whatever, a department or something, you always have to do your due diligence and due diligence is basically just a fancy way of just saying you're going to go in and just find all the bad shit first so you know what you're going to get into and he didn't do that he decided just to say yeah i'm fucking just go buy for 44 billion dollars and leverage your shares and did essentially surface level public scraping of information to do his due diligence which is probably not a good idea because you're trusting that all the information that's put out is not just accurate but also thorough and it's not going to be thorough enough for a purchaser of the product, but he assumed that it was. And now he's stuck with a contract that apparently says he has to pay like a billion dollars or something like that if he's going to uh, back out of it. There's a lot of shareholders who were promised, was it the, the stock was somewhere around $36, $38, something like that. And then it skyrocketed up to 50 something dollars. And now that shit's, or no, no, uh, he was supposed to buy them for $50 a share. Uh, and now instead of any kind of purchase taking place, now they're just going to go down. <laughs> uh, termination fees. Yeah, he's going to make all the Twitter employees go back to the office of... Uh, uh, of Twitter. We ain't gonna do shit now. <laughs> Only a billion. That's Elon walking money. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's the price he has to pay a billion dollars for this little, for this little uh, shindig that he uh, just tried to pull off. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I haven't seen anything on his official Twitter account, uh, but this literally just came out like fucking 10 minutes before we started news. Um, let me go check his, uh, let me see. But now here's the thing. It has to be agreed upon. So he's saying that, that Twitter, uh, uh, either falsified or did not, or did not disclose all the information that he requires in order to follow through with the purchase. Right. Uh, Twitter is saying that they did. So now, now the onus is on Elon because Twitter can still say, nah, man, you can still buy us, man. Like that's part of the agreement that we originally had. You can still buy us. We're not backing out of the deal. So if you want to back out, just a cool billion dollars will probably take care of that. But he's not in a position where like he's locked himself in. Uh, and he has to hopefully, hopefully Twitter is like, you know, oh, well, it's fine. We release you from your contract. <laughs> You'll probably have to go uh, to his truth social profile to find something Elon now. No way. Does he have a truth social? Fuck. It's okay. Everyone has a truth social account. Even uh, 
Even uh, Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom posted some trolling ass shit over there. Uh, so yeah, they uh, he hasn't said anything on Twitter. I actually was kind of hoping he would have said something by now. I mean, he's usually all over Twitter, but you know, this is not really something he wants to pimp. Um, he can't afford Twitter with the two extra babies now. Yeah, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He secretly had twins with, I guess, yet, yet another person. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Th- it's not the same. It's not the same person, right? Does he have like all of his kids from different uh, parents or some shit? It's like an old uh, executive or something. You know, just a little in-house action. Uh, what was it? I got. I, I has weekend corgi. You got a corgi this weekend? Dang! The SEC has no teeth. And Minister Strait is in a grave. Oh, well, well. That is a developing story. Elon may come out and say something, but it's not going to change the fact that he is legally trying to back out of the deal, and he needs to either prove that Twitter is in the wrong, which would be very difficult to do, uh, or he needs to uh, uh, pay to Billy. Pay to Billy. Uh, I just want the knives out kind of scene when all the kids are at the at the will reading. I haven't seen that movie, but I heard it's really good. It's on my short list. It's on my short list. Uh, Moving on from Elon, we got some sad news. We got some, we got actually a whole bunch of sad news, actually. I was not expecting this. Uh, so first off, uh, a couple weeks ago, probably like a week and a half ago or something, uh, Minecraft YouTuber Technoblade, who was battling cancer for the past year, ended up passing away finally to cancer, of course. Um, and just, uh, uh, just uh, several days ago, uh, his father actually released a video on his YouTube channel, um, uh, talking about, uh, basically reading his last letter that he wrote, uh, to the community and also just talking a little bit about, about him and his work ethic and all that stuff. So, so yeah, like this is, I mean, it's, it's, I, I did not know who Technoblade was like as a YouTuber, right? It's a familiar name that you see. Sure. Uh, but Declan did so that's what got me to look into a little bit further I knew it was I saw the 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 tributes and everything which if you haven't seen them they're very thoughtful um like Hypixel who we work with the Hypixel community for a long time you know they post some artwork they have a thread going here uh uh, probably the biggest one is the one that happened in the Minecraft launcher and this is where this is where Declan actually uh uh came to me he saw in the launcher and he was like oh they added the the ever-living pig uh (laughs) like something I think it's uh, the crowned pig yeah um and uh uh, and so he asked me what happened he asked me what cancer was and all that stuff because he had no idea uh and I did my best to explain it to him in a way that you know didn't necessarily make him feel like you know everyone's gonna die from this thing uh so yeah it's it's oh it's sad I mean this is this this is while this may not have a direct impact on some of you guys directly like you know you, a lot of you guys remember Total Biscuit and Total Biscuit had a massive influence on on gamers of like well huge huge like uh uh, uh Venn diagram circles but maybe then overlap um some of the same groups that would probably go on to watch Technoblade and all his shenanigans and everything that he did uh, but that, that's how big we're talking like you know this is a this is somebody who had a sev- serious 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 um reach developers too yeah oh yeah um so yeah it's, yeah it's sad day sad day for fans sad day for all for all of them uh there's actually you know uh <laughs> he actually there's a video that's posted by dream who's a friend of his speedrunner dream um and in this video, uh, he he shows screenshots of a discussion that that uh, uh, that Techno Blade was having in their Discord. And you know, some of some of this stuff is like you know when you know when you know you are like um, like your 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 time is up. You kind of make you make it to a point where you're just kind of like, well, now we could kind of just not really have fun with it, but you know, kind of have fun with it. Like he's like, I'd ruin everyone's week. They'd be in a good mood, and I'd just destroy it serves them right for surviving <laughs> so yeah that is like last this little bit of humor i appreciate the schedule to upload until after my death so i can say upload schedule is too strong for death to stop it uh i mean the whole video is just full of just captions of shit that he was talking about just up you know up, I'm up it was yeah it was yesterday 417 so i'd imagine it's not too far behind uh when he uh when he passed away um yeah he knew his mortality yeah and he accepted it respect yep um this pretty this is pretty funny. He said he's gonna upload a video, and because of his stream, his uh, upload schedule being so so uh, uh, so drastically like gapped out, he said is that I would upload for a month, but that'd be normal, so they wouldn't know. Decades later, wait guys, I think he was serious. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, I mean, definitely mad respect for like, you know, facing your mortality and, uh, um, and trying to make light of it and everything. And I mean, what else can you do? Best way to fucking do it right there. So, um, uh, elsewhere, uh, elsewhere, sorry. In, uh, in Japan, actually, we have a couple of things to talk about in Japan. Uh, uh, Kazuki Takahashi, who is the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are f- familiar with. I know you guys are nerds, card nerds. Um, but yeah, the, direct, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! passed away. He was six, 60 years old, really young, 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 young. I, I don't, I didn't look in to see like how or why, but this is a tough one for a lot of folks. Um, you know, you, uh, this one makes me sad even more. Yeah, sorry. I know it's, it's a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know how he went. I didn't look that part up or whatever, but, uh, now he's doing the fuck out of God. <laughs> Yeah, there's some shit. There's some shit. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's huge, man. It's fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, <laughs> like, I mean, it's pretty big. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's been, it's been a rough day. Drown in snorkeling. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, that's fucking sucks. I was going to say, like, yeah, he's young. Like, that's crazy. Snorkeling accident. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I wonder if his 90th iteration of Yu-Gi-Oh will ever will, will ever have its finale. What what role did he have in like the current uh, ongoings of Yu-Gi-Oh? A lot of times, the creators of these things, when they get to a certain point, they step away. You know, like <laughs> they're just like, "Cool, I have a team now. It's gonna run it." Nothing really. Okay, I mean, still, you know, credit credit where credits due. Of course, but I was just curious what his uh, current uh, status was. I mean, yeah, fuck. <laughs> what does this shirt say? Uh, oh, of course, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh shirt. <laughs> uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys already saw, too. Um, I think this is the last sad, sad story here. But uh, uh, yesterday, the um, uh, the Japan's uh, ex-prime minister was campaigning, um, uh, was campaigning, he was doing a speech, campaign speech uh, in, uh, in Japan, and, and he ended up getting assassinated. There's video floating around and everything. Obviously, we're not going to watch it here. Uh, but he was shot by a homemade shotgun. It was like two pipes duct taped together, probably using like a battery or something like that as an actuator or something. Um, yeah, they're supposed to go to vote soon. Uh, and it was, uh, it was politically charged. The person, the person who did it, uh, said that, uh, they didn't, they didn't like him for whatever reason. I don't know. I didn't really read into it exactly. Everything's all like loosely translated. Um, they say it comes in threes, right? Well, if you look for them, they always come in threes. Yes, that's true. Uh, now it did. It did take kind of a, a kind of a weird turn. It definitely took a bit of a weird turn uh, when a French news pundit, uh, which is like a, uh, the equivalent of like uh, CNN or Fox News, like somebody who's on Twitter who just like spouts bullshit all day, um, happened to also spout some bullshit. Some of the most absurd bullshit you'll see about this. They took. What somebody said, what somebody on the internet said about the shooter, <laughs> and uh, 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 and ran with it without double without double checking, and that something happened to include Hideo Kojima, who is the creator of uh, of of Metal Gear, uh, uh, Stranding, Death Stranding, uh, just. <laughs> And so he's sharing these this, these pictures, and he's like, "Oh, this is your extremist, your extremist, because he's into Che Guevara or whatever." So it's like. <laughs> you have that hat man's wanted revenge also know that the guy from the alt-right groups is in france yes he's french sorry did i mess that a french pundit yeah um <laughs> but he's but yeah so he's been he's being you know this guy he later deleted the tweet he later deleted the tweet but it was too late at this point because once one guy does it, he says right here, he says, my apologies. I naively took a joke for information. Uh, I don't think we could make humor about the assassination of a man, but I was wrong not to not to check before sh- sharing. My apologies to Hideo Kojima and to the fans of Metal Gear. Um, and but, but like I said, all it takes is for one to do it, and that's enough verification for other news, news uh, 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 platforms to have, and then they end up running with it, like this, for example. Oh! Oh, 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 I understand. I wish to proceed. Oh, shit. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I have, I have, I have a time stamped that they just added that. That's something they just added like, uh, uh, shit just like for past hour or something. Um, anyways. Yeah. So this is an actual news broadcast. This is from Greece. Let me, uh, hold on. Okay. Let's make sure there's no music playing. 
Ιατρικού και δίδασκε ω καθηγητή σε ιατρική σχολή μαθήματα φυσιοθεραπεία για ασθενεί με άνοια. Είχε. Like actual, πάθος... actual news! Actual news! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> Yo, they say Mike Vines breathes violence, but in the end, it has to be this way. Wait, which part? Blaming, blaming someone completely unrelated for this? Where you're looking at sad news today? Have you seen this? Oh man, I'm not looking for sad news. You guys want to dig this shit up? Uh, I think I think I have. Uh, oh yeah, James Can't. Oh man, yeah, this is a tough one too. Okay, yeah, James Can't. He died a couple days ago, right? Um, yeah, this is a tough one too because, uh, well, for for he's a great actor and also like he was an elf for me. You know, elf misery like he was amazing in these things um anyways so sorry sorry let me go back i'm just i'm not looking for i'm not looking for sad stories okay we're just we're just talking about this shit because they happen and that's it okay then we're, we're done you don't know any of these people personally oh well well <laughs> you really narrow it down when you say that you understand that blood glass <laughs> They probably Googled a random Japanese guy and used the first pictures. Apparently, it started on 4chan, where everything starts. Uh, and somebody was running around saying that it was a um, that it would that it, that was him and and all this stuff. And I guess he just uh, oh, oh that's right. They tweeted out it's like oh here's the 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 assassin the the assassin whatever uh, socialist something. Um, it was written in another language, and then the guy ran with it. He was like cool. He was like yeah, that must be it, man. Legit guy on the internet. Boop will never let me down. And he rolled with it. And then he looked like an asshole. <laughs> How long before 4chan is running CNN or Fox News? They kind of already are kind of running their own. Like puppeteering their own for fuck's sake. No more sad, only glad. <laughs> uh, you see, yeah, you, you probably ran this, but I'm on the show. Did you see 4chan is shutting down or was that a joke? Oh, I didn't see that. I, I don't, I doubt that's the case, but we'll see. Who cares? Who cares? That'd be nice, though. <laughs> that 4chan guy is usually... Who is this 4chan? Usually the trusted source of information. Exactly. A lot of times, the uh, the first thing I learned about a famous person is when uh, they say they died. Oh, well, shit, blood glass. Oh, you didn't literally mean you don't know them personally, right? That's what, okay. That You didn't literally mean that because I'll burn... I'll... <laughs> Who is this 4chan? Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> right, that's start I'd start with something else here. Hold on. Uh so uh this was this was uh this was brought to my attention by uh by, by Clunkers Robo um and uh and, and uh, uh, uh Freycore in the community. I appreciate you guys for bringing this news to my attention because otherwise I may have missed it, but this one's pretty important. You also, yeah, you also didn't know them personally. Yeah, you guys weren't friends. <laughs> uh but there is a uh, there's a group of people in Final Fantasy 14 who wanted to advertise their party that they have going on on the role playing server slash group slash corner of the Internet. Uh, but in the game in, in Final Fantasy 14. And so what they did was they decided to go ahead and pull uh, 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 to go ahead and pay for a billboard. It's real. It's a real billboard uh, for their for their role playing party where some erotic role play may or may not take place. And they ran it in Texas. <laughs> so there's a lot here. You think you think, oh, that's that's hilarious. Oh, that's so funny. It was up for a day and then I guess it disappeared. It cost 160 bucks. So I didn't think it was any that big of a deal, right? <laughs> So the controversy comes into play when you start looking at this. You're just saying, okay, there's a Final Fantasy logo on it. We'll start with the surface level stuff first. I know some of you guys are deeper than that. I'll get there. All right. So a hammer of wrath. Let me just spoil the whole story. Now that's not even it. All right. So <laughs> there's a Final Fantasy logo on it. Can't really do that can't because then it looks like it's official it look sure dj potatoes logos on it but dj potato is also sponsoring it right he's part of he's part of the crew right uh, uh sure king whatever sponsor sure 
But Final Fantasy XIV, not officially. That logo is indeed part of the terms of it. They have it in there where you can't necessarily use the logo for whatever you want. That's kind of just the way things are with logos and brandings. You can't just put an advertisement up. It's fucking ad, it says ad right there. It's an advertisement. And just use anybody's. Look right here. Copyright, Square Enix, limited, all rights reserved. They really try to cover their, cover their ass on this thing. <laughs> they really truly did. But the other problem on top of this is that these these outfits that they're wearing here especially hers first off the poses the poses are not poses you could do in game okay so you're kind of breaking another rule right they can't do these poses in game um the other thing is the outfits that they're wearing that she's wearing here um is apparently not available yet it's data mined so they're data mining stuff that's not released then they're using it for their advertisements. They're breaking a whole lot of rules. And while I haven't been keeping up on Final Fantasy and Squeenix's like current policies on things, I distinctly remember them being very, very against certain kinds of mods and which kind of included a lot of them, uh, especially the ones that would track your DPS and such. I remember that being a huge thing back then because people were like, well, how are we gonna know people are doing shit? They're like, you just gonna fucking figure it out, but you can't use these mods. <clears throat> so it says XIV is fully against mods and add-ons. I, I What I read was that there's some things they'd kind of turn a blind eye to. Maybe that was the erotic RP stuff. Uh, <laughs> But overall, yes, this is breaking a whole lot of rules. And so now people who are part of the mod community who have, uh, I guess they've lived this life of being able to just kind of be under, just kind of just be just, just fly under the wire just a little bit my, yeah, with minor things. But they're worried that this could actually be bring um, more unwanted attention to mod creators, editors, whatever. And also uh, to people who do uh, RP stuff. They felt like, oh, maybe this is going to make us look kind of bad if we're doing this stuff. But uh, it's a don't ask, don't tell sort of thing. That's what I read. That's what I read, basically. Uh, see, they turn a blind eye to stuff like damage meters as long as you don't use them to harass others. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, okay, Twitter is suing, suing Elon. Is that new, new? Is that new, new, new? We talked about that, <laughs> the first part of that. Um, hey, there are a lot of clothing mods and stuff, but they ignore it as long as you keep it on the down low. Yeah. This mod's real shit. <laughs> Whiskey Jojo, erotic RP characters with that look underage. I sleep mods, real shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was on a billboard and went viral, so now everybody fucking knows. The RP is allowed in games as long as it's private. Mods are ignored as long as you don't go posting them and bring attention to it, like streaming them or posting a fucking billboard. Hey, man, it was 160 bucks. And like, I feel like that's good money spent. Like, it's good promotion. Look at the party is tomorrow night. If you guys, you guys can still make it. All right, this is the best 160 bucks this group has ever spent. But Saturday, July 9th, you guys can still attend. All right, it's 8 p.m. CST. It's gonna be on which server? Uh, let's see, Crystal Balmung Mist Ward 23 Plot 5. I guess that's the address or something. <laughs> <laughs> 160 bucks is pretty cheap. I didn't know it was that cheap for a billboard. Man, I'll buy my own fucking billboard. Of course, it's in Texas somewhere, so who knows? Who knows who's around? Um, <laughs> uh, people went and started making fun of them uh, at their uh, their plot. I think <laughs> like went to their house, <laughs> went to the party place. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, uh, see, d d d d yeah. So exactly, it's um. The oh, what is this? It also lit another XIV party on the same day and time. The other guys memed it too. But it's oh, it another another XIV party. Oh god, those bastards! They villains have an audacity to throw a party on the same day. The rejoining is happening. <laughs> oh man, and also like, why do people do? I know, I know, this is a uh, this is a uh, uh, you're know, fake, but why do people put HTTPS? colon slash slash whenever they type out somewhere on print where you cannot click on it the url uh maybe people just don't know huh people just don't know like that you you could just you don't need the https colon slash slash every time i'm not clicking on that shit oh wait maybe i'll click on it. hold on a second 
What is this? Prey returned? Oh, God. Yeah, so there's plenty. Everyone's memeing on this shit. Hilarious. These people are dumb and think you need it. Yeah, dumb. Forgot the www. Oh, Ninja, you got... <laughs> anyways, anyways. <laughs> Uh, there's an amazing video outside of their house in game. Oh shit! Oh man, can you give us the uh, Oi Brother Celebration? No, what? I mean, congratulations, congratulations. I heard, I saw that. I saw that playing where they're trying to give the report. Try to be all serious about it. Mojo resign. Blah blah blah. All you hear in the background. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, the party's still going on. You can go there and check it out if you want. You can make fun of them, I guess, if you want, which is not nice. You should just go for the party, man. Just go for the party and have a good time. Ear is gonna find a video for us uh, that shows the uh, uh, that shows the the actions and whatever that happened there. Oh, but actually, you know what? There is a um, I get banned. Yeah, you get banned for yeah for by using an emote. Huh? What? What? <laughs> huh? Huh? Um, there is a. Uh, this is just random, but the anime expo happened, and there was a. Uh, a full, full bus wrap. Look at this thing. Fucking crazy. That's fucking crazy. Got a video for you on the, on the topic. Composer, a bunch. You need to sing a song. It's great. Oh, not right now, Zebrio. So it's not time for that, though. Thank you. Um, Sorry, man. We, we're news. We're news mo. We're news mo. All right. If it's not controversial, I don't want to see it. People singing kumbaya and shit. Get that shit out of here. I got time for that. The fuck? Let me check it real quick. Oh man, they're just they're just singing. I don't care about this shit. <laughs> uh see how you can see the clown the glasses, whatever you get banned. Okay, okay, cool. Alright, good. <laughs> Alright, move it on. Move it on. Let's see. Oh, well, you know what, man? And speaking, speaking of, of of Anime Expo, uh, it did happen. It did happen this weekend, or sorry, uh, uh, this past week, week at weekend, whatever. Um, and there were a lot of people there. Um, you can take a look at this here. Here is a video, just a panning video of the inside. Uh, this this is people that were waiting to be let in, which is common to see a lot of people. Like, you know, waiting for the doors to open. So this is not un uncommon. Uh, this person did say that there were fire inspectors or whatever saying that they were limiting the amount of people that came in. But everything else I found uh, uh, on it was basically moot. Like, it was maybe a fire inspector was like, oh, you know, we'd probably slow it down a little bit. But everybody got in and they're all able to cough and breathe all over each other and wipe their nose and touch everything. And then share that controller with their friend who would then share it with somebody else. And then they went and probably picked their nose and sucked under the thumb or whatever. And then that's it. So, <laughs> no sitting, no food, no water, no AC. Unbelievable. Uh, the AC thing, I, I, I don't know if the AC thing is true, but um, uh, yeah, they didn't make them turn in their food and water before they went inside. I mean, people make it a huge deal out of it, man. It's fucking every, it's like almost damn every, every convention is like this. They must have forgotten. All these people, I guess, who weren't, weren't old enough to go to conventions before, uh, when, <laughs> before, uh, um, uh, coronavirus, for fuck's sake. Um, oh, Rod, thank you, hooking up, era. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, what we got? What we got? Oh, this is the, uh. That was a weird, that was a weird transition there. What the fuck? Okay, well, I'll have to look at that later because that, for some reason, that link is acting really fucking weird for me. Um, smells like a gamer. Thanks. There you go. All right. So, yeah, it's, uh, it did happen. It was, uh, I, I found this video from uh, Newegg, actually. Post this, this Ultraman suit, which looked pretty sick. I mean, all these places always have really cool, uh, uh, cosplays. Um, but this one's extra fucking cool. I don't know if he can move in, uh, in, in any other way. They're just nodding every once in a while, whatever. Maybe wave or something. Probably just kind of stuck there. Uh, let's see. What is? What do you have here? Is this the actual thing? I see XIV in the thing. See, if it is the billboard FC House, it is going about as what you expect. About as how you'd expect. Well, that's not that many people, man. This ain't a party. Actually, you know what's funny? If a party actually does start there and they're still out there, they're gonna join. Come on, they're gonna join. Of course they are. Of course they are. Audio? Oh, is there music audio there? Okay, well, I'm gonna stop it there. Let it continue. Oh shit. Turn sound on. Oh. Okay. Fuck. Let it play out. Man, damn. 
Oh my god, they're all just parked around it. <laughs> Alright, nerds. Okay, moving on. <laughs> I know that, that 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 class, they actually have to uh um you actually have to like like play those notes, right? It's not pre-programmed or whatever. The meme game world. It's a peaceful protest. This is gonna stand outside while he eats inside. Oh no, I couldn't finish my dessert. Huh? No? What? No? Which part? Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's move! You can macro the songs. Okay. Oh, well, no skill then, huh? All right, let's, anyways. Okay, okay, so, 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 Anime Expo happened. Anime Expo happened. Yeah, everybody's very happy. Uh, we're hearing about next, next year. We already have some. Thank you, Neutronus. This shit's turned off right now, but you're the best. Uh, we see right here, next year, Blizzard's also planning a BlizzCon in person. Actual BlizzCon actual in-person BlizzCon. The last one being, I believe, the Do You Have Phones? No, no, that was the second to last one. It was the Do You Have Phones one. The WhoCon? Whoa! That's right, BlizzCon. I sleep! It says, we previously announced a pause. We were taking uh, we we're taking a pause at BlizzCon while we reimagine it for future, but we don't want to return to a live event that enables us. We want to, we do want to return to a live event that enables us to celebrate the community. We re recently hired a new leader at BlizzCon, April McKee, who is hard at work on that plan. We're They're going to commit to bringing it um next year i've already seen some mixed reviews about this mixed responses people are saying uh you know shit company why would i be involved with uh, anything related to them uh i've seen uh cube cross or plushies exactly see yeah 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 exactly um <laughs> we don't know what the we don't know what the what the climate's gonna look like in a year and a few months like basically like 15 months from now because like always what november or something so 16 months 17 months um all we know is that uh yeah it's gonna be the post post microsoft acquisition so we don't know what we don't know if Bobby's going to be involved anymore. We don't know any of that shit. We know that Bobby's going to be involved as of the last uh, quarter vote that kept him on uh, for at least another year, but we don't know if that will extend beyond that year, which would be before this BlizzCon. Um, me personally, like, I mean, it's been so many years since the last BlizzCon that I went to, which was, I think, the last BlizzCon. Uh, was that 2019, right? Oh, did they skip that year? Whatever. Like, 2019, 2018 is the last time we went. By the time we go to this one, it's going to be four years later. That's a lot. That's a long time. <laughs> that's a long fucking time, man. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, uh, who knows what it's going to look like, but, I mean, I would love, if, if, if people went there like they used to, which I doubt, um, then I would love to go and just get a place out there and just like hang out with all the people because I had the most fun hanging out with community people there than in any other one because that's where all the community went. All the community went there, right? So it's like, of course, that's, that's the hangout spot. Um, and so they're going to bring Gary and John, John on and get waste like 2011? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, isn't Gary like 100 years old now? He can't drink anymore, man. He's past his prime shit. <laughs> Airbnb party? No, no, not, not like that. <laughs> you spent most of your time in the Hilton Lobby bar? Yeah, that's where you go. What's the point of BlizzCon now? All their big announcements were leaked and are already done. All that's going to be is a big pile of hate and capitalism mixed together. We don't know. We don't. It's in another year. Zabrios, it's in another year plus. You don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Cabin in the Woods, phony con. Psh we have others we have others we have uh, e3 this is probably the most confusing of all of them because i thought this one was actually dead but reed pop who's the pax organizer uh is going to be taking over this thing it's not going to be a digital it's not going to be a digital event it's going to be an in-person event um we've already seen other conventions already kind of hitting the ground running non-gaming ones or like maybe gaming adjacent ones like anime expo i would consider that gaming adjacent um but you know maybe they could pull something out i don't know who's gonna be there because every big contributor every big booth person is already has their own shit and we have game we have game fest right summer game fest uh <clears throat> we have um uh I guess we have OTK They're probably going to do their thing as well next year. There's, there's tons. You late, you late him hate BlizzCon regardless. Well, it's 365 days from now. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
What? What's your confidence rating on Blizzard avoiding more scandals for a full year? I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe they could they could come clean of the next year. Maybe they could fire some people, some more people. You know, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, maybe it's gonna be shit. I have no idea. It's in a fucking year. <laughs> it's in a fucking year, man. I'm not trying to think that far ahead. I don't even know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna go because they're gonna be shit. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, they should rebrand to an adult convention E3. Ooh, experience erotic entertainment. Ooh. They already had they already have an erotic expo. You can't have two erotic expos. You can't do that. You can't cheat on one with another. Pizza tonight. <laughs> it's only one year. No, bitch. That's a long time. That's a long time. That's a long time. I'm gonna look totally different in a year. I'm gonna be skinnier, swole, fucking huge ass. I'm like, boah. Be ripped. My chin's gonna be like, kah, 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 kah. I'm gonna have like abs on my fucking chins. It's gonna be great. <laughs> on my chins. <laughs> Those these. Let's go boom, boom, boom. Let me flex and shit. <laughs> chabs. Fucking <laughs> chabs. Yeah, boy, check out my chap. <laughs> Chin abs. You know how much shit I can hold up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, god damn it. Anyways, move on. So, uh, uh, so this one, this one, this one, I had to dig a little bit for. The, this one's kind of an interesting story. So, uh, those of you guys who pay attention to like any other sports, right? Uh, you've probably seen a big push by the um, by 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 people from Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, representatives from Saudi Arabia, uh, approaching other uh, sports industries and either attempting or succeeding uh, in creating their own league or whatever as it relates to uh, whatever, you know, whatever game it is, like golf, for example. They have the LIV uh, uh, versus the PGA Tour, right? PGA Tour we're familiar with. Uh, they have their own tour that they're launching, uh, and they already have a whole bunch of people. They put $200 million into this process of trying to acquire and, and get and launch this, launch their own uh, golf tournament. Why do you care? Why do you care? I'm getting there. Just shut the fuck up. All right. They also spent, uh, 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 I don't see it here. I thought I had a note for it, but they spent um, a lot of money, like something upwards of three quarters of a billion dollars on, um, on F1 to get F1 race there. Uh, and yeah, they're just, they're just, Goodwill, what goodwill, and, and expanding esports. Yes, so they are expanding into esports too. So this is controversial because the money comes from the Kingdom's Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is five hundred billion dollars, entirely chaired by the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Sal Sal Salman. So basically, their leader of their country is running this five hundred billion dollar. Um, is, wait, is he a leader of the country? It says crown prince, but everyone's a fucking prince. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, so it's it's a lot of money that they're using in what's called uh, 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 sports washing. Or for us, it's going to be esports washing. So is the leader a gamer? No, I think that they're just, they understand that Saudi Arabia has a really bad rap right now for like a bazillion reasons. <laughs> Both past and current. Uh, and so they're using this money as a means to get on the public's good side by showing, look, we have people that participate in sports and you could come here and have a good time. It's a vacation destination. Sure. Our women just got rights like two and a half years ago, but still, <laughs> so, uh, bribery you mean? Yes. Well, that's one thing for it. So there was a clip that was, uh, that was released here and it was some thoughts from, uh, Poker Lols. I'll go ahead and let him speak. To go somewhere for four days. Just listen. Like fly somewhere. So he's talking about Saudi Arabia. <laughs> of course. Uh for four days. Ms. Kiff to play Fortnite. And somebody else. Yeah, to play Fortnite. And they get paid a fuck ton of money. He got offer too. Hold on. Not, this is a real deal. An offer. Real offer. And uh, you know what's funny? In the end of the message, it says Miss Giff and Emery are going. <laughs> of course. 
course they're going. Miss Kiff and somebody else. I can't remember who. Uh, oh, Emmy, uh, Emmy, Emmy, Emma, Emma Lee, Emmy, Emmy Lee, right? I think is what it is. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> so he says, so Poke Law says, uh, Emmy Ru, thank you, says uh, that he got an offer to go to Saudi Arabia to play Fortnite. And the offer was $100,000 for four days, three Twitter posts, three Insta stories, two Insta feeds, one YouTube. Uh, the event in question is the Saudi Saudi government's uh, sponsored Gamers 8 Festival, whatever that is. So it's a festival of some sort. Um, and so, yeah, this is drawing a lot of controversy because Saudi Arabia is not necessarily like, you know, the good guys or anything, but they're doing their best to bribe everybody. Right? Esports wash. Um, even Asmongol, Asmongol actually was asked the same thing because he, he'd mentioned it and he defended them. He defended their right to go and play for money in Saudi Arabia, regardless of whether or not it's blood money. And uh, Asmongold said uh, said this in a now deleted uh, um, uh, clip. So basically, the way that I make all my decisions is a very simple question. Is this beneficial to me? And if it's beneficial to me, then I do it. That's it. Everything else below that is like, I would say it's subtext, but to be honest, it's not even on the page. That's it. Now I would I would go I would do probably the Saudi Arabia thing, but there's no fucking way I'm gonna travel. Uh, that's it. Maybe that's a true and accurate history. It's probably not over history, but today it's probably not. Uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I think that America contributes a lot of negativity around the world and, and negative effects around the world. Would you take a sponsorship from Russia? Um, uh, take a sponsor for it depends on what it is. Like, I mean, a sponsor. <laughs> I like how that, that, that was chat was just started going. All right. So what like a sponsor from Hitler? Like, where do we draw the line here? Asmongold, you seem to have a whole lot of if it benefits me. <laughs> As a Saturday's crown prince literally murdered and dismembered a journalist for simply criticizing the government. I used to actually know his name, but yes, yes, it's true. Uh, <clears throat> it is a lot of money. Might as well go get their money if they're willing to give it. So that's that's the pickle that a lot of people are in is that do you accept this money because it benefits you or do you um, do you say no to the money? Pokolol said no to the money. Um uh, actually, Miss Kiff. I think Miss Kiff and M M M L uh, Emiru also both backed out. Um, <clears throat> are you a surprise? Aren't exactly moral, moral inspiring people. Yes, that's that's like the biggest. That's the biggest thing. The biggest takeaway here, I think, is that people, time and time again, keep on being surprised that these that content creators are not like the most morally just people, right? They're surprised that. <laughs> <laughs> that Asmogold grew up who the fuck knows where, went to who the fuck knows what public school, like all the rest of us did, right? Has probably the same level of surface knowledge about general shit that all of us does. Has basically no morals because it doesn't take much, right? You grow up in the wrong or right uh, environments and, you know, you're, you're, you're just going to have a different perspective on things. And his is like, yeah, I'll probably do that. probably do the Saudi Arabia thing. Now, I'm not trying to pin it all on him because there's others that do some pretty blasphemous shit on uh, on Twitch also. So I'm not trying to call him out directly, but his stance on it is a bit uh, flimsy, I feel like. Jeez, Mike, self-report. What I do? Hey, Sav, thank you so much. Cut the shit off. But You streamers are human? Oh, yes, that part. <laughs> Uh, say yes to the money and donate half the money caused directly related to Saudi atrocities. You could not even announce that though until after you were done. That's kind of the catch here. You, uh, <clears throat> you, uh, because there was an issue with WWE. WWE, they had some, uh, they, they had some, uh, issues with, uh, I guess somebody said something critical or whatever, and they ended up holding the plane over and not letting the WWE, uh, uh, actors or athletes. Um, fly home for 24 hours they're held up for. I don't know all the details of it, but uh, I know that they're not saying that it was because of anything government related, but everybody knows that it was government related. <clears throat> it's fast tried to get chopped up. Yeah. Gonna watch the vibe, big man. And hotel slow and I missed some stuff. Peace out. Hey, Sap, have a good one. I think it's also the whole thing. My favorite content creator is a moral person. So when shit like this happens, they get all bent out of shape or they just blindly just say, no, it's cool. It must be. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, he's right. He has, he has, or he has a right to believe that, right? It's kind of like, okay. He has a right to make that paper if he wants to do. If he wants to get that bag in Saudi Arabia, blood money, all that shit. Fine. Totally fine. Um, there was a clip that I was going to play, but it was copyright struck from everywhere. 
I found it on, I found it on, I think on livestreamfail.com with the only place that continues to persist. Uh, and it was these two, uh, these two streamers are like sisters or something the Dubez stippers, sisters or something. And they're from like Dubai or whatever. And they were talking about, I guess they were confronted with the question about how they feel about Dubai and modern day sa- slavery, which happens in Saudi Arabia. Uh, <clears throat> and their response was typical of somebody who's like, you know, a 20 year old fucking kid doesn't know shit. Uh, it was like, well, I don't think that developing countries should who who you are sorry that developed countries who have used these practices in the past to get to build their empire to where they're at can be critical of of uh, up and coming developing countries like Saudi Arabia for you know using the same tactics it's completely dismissing like maybe we learned a lot in the past centuries <laughs> just well you did it too yeah, it's just, it's, it's, but I mean, you know, it's, it's every country's got the things. The U.S. has done some fucked up things, I guess, but we didn't like chop, we haven't chopped anybody up or anything like that. I don't think not publicly or anyways. So yeah, if, uh, if, if people were to be accepted of other people's opinion, it wouldn't be subject to discussion in the first place. Uh, Rasmus World, well, Rasmus World, Never Mind the Slavery is a great song about the upcoming World Cup. Oh boy. Question is, can we impose our morals or our morals on others? That's fucking deep, bro. Uh, <laughs> anyways, all right. So moving on. That's um. Well, actually, no, no, no. Hold on a second. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. So long-term partnership WWE, six hundred fifty million dollars. That was the ten-year deal they had with Formula Formula One for having the one, the one um um race that they have out there. Uh, Heroes of the Storm. Oh, they actually. I saw. I saw that. Uh, uh Pez Radar. Uh, he posted that he used to work on Here's a Storm. Now he work in, works for the Diablo Immortal team. Uh, but he mentioned that he used to love playing it. I'm guessing, I guess it was probably because it's closing down. Oh, rip. Uh, maintenance mode. Oh. I, wait, it wasn't in maintenance mode already? <laughs> Did it literally work people to death and deny them the ability to quit working on the new soccer stadium? Probably. Probably. When will the Saudi Civil War start to stop slavery? Yeah, I don't know. Um... All I know is there's blood money available for those of you guys who like money that much and who who have the same beliefs of. So basically, the way that I make all my decisions is a very simple question. Is this beneficial to me? Is this is this beneficial to you? <laughs> then I guess you have your answer. Move on. What is that? You take the money and they just not do what they asked me to do? Bitch, they'll chop your ass up, man. They'll fucking chop you up, man. What do you want? Like, they'll, they'll keep you on a plane. You'll disappear, man. You're done. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dude, just like three years ago, they made it so that women didn't have to ask to be like, to live by themselves or some shit, right? It was like 2019 or something, I think, for that one. Like, just years ago, they're like, okay, fine. You don't need permission from your guardian women to go and live by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> what it will see, uh, uh, let them try. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Internet tuck guy. Come on. Anyways. Uh, speaking of, speaking of video games, try dealing with them would be like trying to deal with the mob. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, uh, Max Roll. <clears throat> Max Roll is a uh, a, a, a min max uh, site for people who play like Lost Ark, uh, Poe, any of the Diablo games except for one, and that is Diablo Immortal, which will no longer be supported by MaxRoll.gg. Now, some of you guys who probably either don't play enough ARPGs or don't. No, that probably could be like, oh, well, who are these guys? Who cares if they don't they don't cover the game? It's kind of a big deal because this is like, this is like if WoW had straight up told uh, uh, Blizzard they weren't going to cover like the next, you know, whatever iteration of WoW, whatever that would be because they didn't agree with blank. Um, <clears throat> now, they actually go through and they, they detail the timeline, everything that they did, including the multi... The multi-bullet-pointed uh, list of 
of uh, reasons plus their explanations. Um, <clears throat> now, even I was in the I was in the ballpark of like, okay, how much of an impact do they really have on development? And I went and I looked up and kind of I watched some of the videos with the um, <clears throat> with some of the guys that were on this team, and and here he's when we were playing in the alpha, talking about or, you know his experience had, in alpha, we were the most powerful people in the world. We sent a message to Blizzard um, as part of the feedback and said. Did you realize that the the way that you power up in this game, the way you gain XP, the way you get items, the way you upgrade your materials is very lopsided. Some events are godly and some dungeons are godly and some of them are utter utterly terrible. So, <clears throat> like he said, like his team was like the the number one whatever power rating they were they were going through farming bosses and you know they went hard spreadsheet on the shit and he even details here he shows that you know these things are super lopsided if you want to grind whatever it is that you want to grind in this where like one thing like the mad king first boss he showed that if you just went and killed the mad king first only first boss encounter you get almost as much xp as farming some of these other larger areas that you'd have to go through. Uh, and so he reported these findings, but apparently like a lot of the stuff that they reported to Blizzard um, ended up just falling on deaf ears. And so that's part of the part of the reason why they decided they're not going to um, uh, support the game. Uh, have you played Immortal? I played en I played enough to realize I don't want to play it, but also uh, I don't play a lot of mobile games, um, period. So it's not their fault. And I'm not going to play it on PC. It's just not, it's not a game I'm interested in playing on PC. Um, so yeah, they, they, they did a lot of contribution. And so what part of the argument against, you know, them pulling support saying that, okay, well, you know, they're not really, what are they really doing? They're not really part of the dev team. It doesn't really mean anything. It does mean something. Blizzard does reach out to these groups. They want them to test. They reach out because they want them to get the data for them. So they don't have to pay, not just Blizzard, all game devs, right? They don't want to pay for the, uh, for the actual play testing, they don't pay for that. They'd rather just put it off onto a whole bunch of folks um, who have played the games, who know the games, who know how to exploit the games, uh, and also have a, a good understanding of how to put together uh, data that they can actually use. And so that's what they're doing here. Uh, very interesting video where he goes over all of the different stats and everything they collected. Uh, it's not even the whole video. It's actually just a chunk of it if you want to watch it. I have the, I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it in the notes. <clears throat> And so, so yeah, it's a, uh, just like uh, StarCraft 2, just like StarCraft 2. Yep. So yeah, these guys, I mean, it means a big, it, it means a lot when they say that they're not going to be supporting a game like this anymore, when they've already supported every other, every game really that they put out, I think. Uh, Diablo 2, Diablo, yeah, Diablo 2, Diablo 3, and they're going to support Diablo 4, uh, as far as they could see. Um, at Path of Exile, yeah, next league, next league start, quarter four, 2022 for Diablo 4. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, no Diablo Immortal, and that's pretty much it. And they're going to retire that, um, all of their, yeah, free QA testers. Yeah, and it's not just free QA, it's like free good QA testers. Like, these are people that really know their shit, and so they use them for free, they get the information back, and then when, and then when the game comes out and they realize that, like, none of the shit has been fixed, and in some cases, it just got worse, well, why would they... Why would they continue doing anything for the product if they're going to get blown off like that? Blizzard doesn't care, though. Blizzard doesn't care. They're making millions and millions of dollars a day. They don't give a shit. <clears throat> Super good going above and beyond. Yeah, yeah, going above and beyond. And then, you know, kind of get laughed out the office for it. We never had to do balancing passes while doing QA at Ubisoft. Well, then how did, how did, you, how did you balance stuff? <laughs> Just didn't. <laughs> it's just, ah, it's looks good enough. The math works out. Let's send it out. Like, it means they lost some good QA for Diablo 4 as well then. At least I can understand some of them not wanting to put forth the effort then. Yes. Yeah. So I just did that. <clears throat> Fixing it will lose the money. Of course. Of course. Oh, that's the, that's the, that's the implications here. Uh, fixing, fixing stuff like that will just lose them money because they're pointing out that, wow, it's like you have to grind this and that for this, but you're not getting any of blank, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yes, that is by design. We need to make the money, please. <laughs> Blizz is going uh, is going this way with wild content creators for the last couple of X packs and literally not listening to them straight up telling them the creators are wrong and then putting the create in the creators changes later. Yes, that is something that Blizzard has done for a long time. A lot of game dev companies have done that for a long time. Okay, not just Blizzard, but 
Blizzard has just has has just happened to have some of the most popular and the most outspoken um, supporters slash defenders slash people who are not afraid to tell them they're doing things wrong. Um, they have a mixed bag here, so they have to be careful when they're doing stuff like that, where they they collect data and then they they decide not to use the data, or they tell them, "Oh, you're playing the game wrong" or whatever. You're you're gonna get them. You're gonna get a video <laughs> that's gonna get some views of people saying, "Hey." You know, it's like we try to tell Blizzard this and this, and we know it makes sense. And then later, like you said, they end up adding it anyways. So. <clears throat> they make us vote with your money and and uh, make them lose money. Well, that's already happening with uh, with Blizzard and all that. But they do have the new Dragonflight something coming out. Ooh. Uh, anyways, moving on. Wow, wow, what the heck? What time is it? Shit, have we been going for almost an hour? Bitch, I have so much fucking news. Oh my god, listen, listen. Canada news. You're like, boy, get out of here. I'm news. I'm news. Go. Love you. Okay, you, you bruh. He's like, you bruh. You bruh. I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, but you bruh. <laughs> bruh. Bruh his ass right back. No distract, check. No, no distract. I'm sorry that your internet's out. What? <laughs> Anyways, so. <clears throat> Radio Shack. Radio Shack is back, baby. Just not in the way that you would think. Hopefully you guys could all still hang out here. I'm sorry about your internet. Sorry. Radio NFTs. Radio Shack is back, kind of. So Radio Shack already had a whole bunch of stores. Uh, they had like a couple thousand stores. Uh, Radio Shack, if you guys don't know, if you kids don't know what Radio Shack is, basically it's a hardware store for Electrical engineers and nerds, right? It had everything. Every adapter you could think of, every type of wire, every type of plug, every type of whatever, man. They fucking had it all on like these layered shelves that would like slide out of the way, you know? It was like going, it's like having mono price in a store. It was, it was quite a time. It was quite a time. Um, and then they would sell like they would sell like remote control cars and stuff like that. They had to put something in the window. They couldn't they couldn't put like, you know, oh man, we got we got eighth inch to quarter inch jacks, stereo jacks. They couldn't really hang those in the windows or whatever. <laughs> Why did it just up and die like that? Because that shit just cost they were living, first off, they lasted a lot longer than they should have, right? Um their margin probably sucked, but they were living off of or they were existing almost solely off of the money they were making on kickbacks from cell phone signups. For the longest time, uh, Radio Shack was almost exclusively advertising. I mean, shit, even right here in this, in this, even in this picture, <laughs> even in the picture, look, it says a Sprint store at Radio Shack, Boost Mobile, uh, Unlimited Freedom, uh, get our latest phones, unlimited phone plans, unlimited data talking test, now 20, I mean, half the fucking storefront is about phone stuff. So this is what's been keeping Radio Shack afloat. Those kickbacks are pretty good um, when you get somebody to sign up. But then you you start to reach a uh, you start to reach a point where everyone's already got cell phones. Uh, getting people to sign up for new phones isn't really a thing anymore because they're always moving from another company or another whatever. So they they're bringing their own phones. So the hardware sales aren't that great. Uh, and you reach saturation, and then whatever happened happened. I guess they just kind of stopped making money or whatever, or stopped making enough money to like to keep the shareholders happy or whatever. I'm sure it probably would have made enough money if they just kept running things the way they wanted to. But I digress. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, they got Acapita by Best Buy and Electronics, and they shifted to phone plans. And they got buried because they can't offer the same deals as the parent stores can. They just lost all their markets. Yeah, they just don't have any. Uh, so anyways, it's kind of back. Uh, Ty Lopez, who is an influencer who specializes in telling people that they can get rich if they want to uh, and making videos telling people that they can get rich if they want to uh, has... Uh, Apparently, you can make a business out of this. Has per purchased the IP and has used it to promote their own brand of bullshittery on Twitter. Uh, I would say the the number one is probably this one here, which maybe you guys saw. Um, 
<laughs> I saw this tweet when it was when it came out, and like somebody retweeted it, and I was just like, "This is not Radio Shack," and that's what and I thought it was hilarious. And then I think Kimmy pointed out, "It's like, oh no, look at their page, look at their um, uh, look at their actual uh, uh, website, and you'll see that it is pretty much pimping their Radio Shack crypto." So he says, "Think you know crypto? You don't know Shack." So check your browser. And then uh, we enter the app. And then here, this is where we can purchase. We can uh, do a swap. We can connect our wallet and we could get some radio or we could get some shack. So I thought that was odd. <laughs> I could get both radio and shack. So I looked up radio coin to see what it is. Radio coin is trading at uh, uh, about eight thousandth of a penny. <laughs> eight thousandths of a dollar sorry so it's a, a a tenth of a penny eight tenths of a penny um and you know they're they're chilling i guess they have a 20 million dollar market cap somewhere on here it says that uh and then the shack token which is another token for some reason i don't know why uh is trading at uh, two tenths of a penny so you know this is uh, doing pretty good this is actually you know a sad story but this is this is what i purchased my first batch of ninety thousand dogecoin at Yep, and then I sold it too early, and then I bought it, and then I sold it, and then I bought it, and I sold it, and now I lost money. That's how to get you. Uh, buy Shack Dump Radio. Yeah, go buy the radio Shack coins to get one cent. <gasps> so yeah, they uh, uh, they've definitely they've they've turned it into a way to pimp their <clears throat> to pimp their coin. Um, so. I looked into the uh, CMO, the chief marketing officer, who is the one who allegedly is running the Twitter account. And we'll read some of this here. Uh, and it says here, Shaq inter intern here. This is related to the, uh, the, the, if you find a squirt or marry her. He says, I wanted to take a sec to reflect on my posts. I know your tweet, you're expecting me to say in my wildest dreams, I never thought that tweet would go viral and to apologize, but I did it because I know that shit was fire as fuck. No, we didn't get hacked. And no, I'm not fired. Buckle up, bitch. It's like so ed so edgelordy. It's kind of cringy. Um, it's kind of cringy. <laughs> get shacked. You get shacked. Uh, they're really sensitive. Somebody, somebody who does a lot of social media, a lot of social marketing analysis, made a thread talking about who owns Radio Shack now, uh, all this other stuff, and they got like really butthurt about it, right? Um, and here, here's, here's the funny part, right? So there's music here that I don't think I could play. So, so this guy tried to get attention by milking content about us. Now, first off, this guy is always tweeting about this stuff. It had nothing to do with Radio Shack. He was, he was just again, pointing out that there was another, uh, there was, uh, another person running the account. And so, so he's showing that he, he DM them. Uh, he says the post you put out is kind of weak. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> And then it says, there's the thread here. Uh, and so what they did was, I guess this guy, this this uh, CMO, whoever the social media marketer marketer guy is, uh, went digging and found this. Kanye is definitely a gay fish. And and then use this as kind of like, oh shit, we found an old tweet that you said that, you know, you can't say anymore. You called him a gay fish. Um, but what this person who's probably 20 years old doesn't realize is that it's an old 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 south park meme so yeah radio shack the, the guy running radio shack shows himself to be um uncultured an uncultured youngling i went and looked into his uh uh at his feed here his linkedin feed where all these guys hang out and uh don't be too hard on him. he wasn't born yet <laughs> yeah uh, so he says, thank you for the feature on uh, Washington Post. Not everyone may agree with our strategy, but it works. So he's talking about the strategy of being abrasive and being just kind of like, you know, kind of shitty on uh, social media. <clears throat> and so he's saying that, yeah, not everybody agrees with our strategy, but it works. Uh, I went to, so he also said in another article, I think probably in that Washington Post article, um, that he, uh, the, the the main push behind the the uh, relaunching of the brand or the reimagining of the brand, whatever you call it, uh, is not to sell cryptocurrency, right? It's not trying to they're not trying to sell cryptocurrency. We have all this other stuff, but we do have cryptocurrency. And so I went and looked at his his job uh, history to see where he was prior to this, and it looks like I mean if I saw this on something that I was spending current like my my cryptocurrency 
money on, I would run. Uh, he has, first off, he's CMO from April 20, 2022 to present. So, yeah, just like a month and a half ago or something. Uh, he's a co-founder of something called Space from to present, 2022 to present. Uh, co-founder of this other thing, or contract with this other group, 2022 to present. Uh, global head of international biz dev for this other thing. January 2022 to present. Prior to that, he worked for a few months as a marketing director for uh, this game, Rune Games. And then before that, he was a community manager. So it just sounds like he doesn't, he he went from a community manager uh, here. <laughs> uh, and now he's got, since, since the beginning of this year, he's got four companies that he's associated with. Uh, and it, to me, it just sounds like it's an unintentional or un un unplanned rug pull, like in the works, like, yeah, all scams, not necessarily, I don't want to say scams, but like, I, I feel like he's trying really hard to hustle in a lot of different places and he's going to fuck these up, man. It's like, look, it's present all this stuff. Like he's not going to balance all this stuff. Most of these things are probably fake or something. Right. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, he's just, where is it at? Uh, he's, let me see, da -da 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 -da. Let's see crypto. Where did I see uh, NFT? Uh, oh yeah, there's NFT stuff. Yeah, here it is, that's right. So in Rune, that's right, here it is. Uh, he he worked with NFTs. This is the end of last year. <clears throat> this is Screen's Trust Fund Kid. Somebody that has money for sure. Uh, so yeah, he has history working with uh, community generated NFTs. So who knows if this is even, I don't know what Rune game specifically is. is that like the Rune games? Probably another one. Uh, but anyways, it's been taken over by some people who are trying to rejuvenate the brand. The behavior is really bizarre. Uh, like it is really bizarre. I mean, like have you seen with the, uh, if you find a squitter, marry her, it's kind of like, okay, coming from, you know, brand. I mentioned already before that brands that try to be people like, it's really weird to me, you know, like when uh, Xbox official account responded to something before, uh, like a couple months ago. And I was just like, that's weird because it was a very human approach to things. And I just feel like, don't do that. Like Wendy, Wendy got away with it, but we should really stop there. Word of NFT, say no more. That's right. Say no more. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> no, but we have other things also. We have adapters and we have, we sell phone contracts or something. <laughs> uh, you know, it was mentioned already today, uh, cause we're going way over on new. No, we're kind of, kind of over on news. Uh, so about the EU cracking down on loot boxes. I found this article here, uh, earlier today. It says Spain is cracking down on video game loot boxes and they blame it on pathological behavior other than what's in here uh there's not really a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of other news that i found it's basically they're saying that it leads to pathological behavior gambling bad all that stuff also they're going to be going after um they're gonna be going after nfts and cryptocurrency so so loot boxes is just just the tip of the iceberg for spain um, uh, if you recall, I believe we talked about here that, uh, Diablo Immortal had issues launching in, I think, Germany and another country because, uh, of the gambling laws that, that are, that are happening there. And so Spain is going to be added to the list. Eventually you get to the point where you will reach critical mass and the, the countries, the countries will collectively say, Hey, look. Four, four or five of these countries found that this is a bad thing. Maybe we should just be like and do a wipe and no loot boxes anywhere. It's Belgium. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, see. But used to, oh, uh, Lost Ark used to be blocked in the Netherlands because of loot boxes. But Amazon is going to release it here in the Netherlands now. That's right. Yeah. All the uh, all, all of the remoting in and uh, VPNing in order to play. What surprise mechanics? Yeah. Good luck with that. It's just long since passed. Long since passed. It'll fly anymore. <laughs> but surprise these are surprise mechanics um shit man let me see let me see uh, uh spell break spell break it was a battle royale that nobody played uh <laughs> they're getting shut down and they're being absorbed into blizzard they're gonna be working on the uh on dragonflight the upcoming uh, uh expansion for for world of warcraft there's a group i think it's like 100 people or something like that uh, but Spellbreak itself, the Battle Royale, is going to be closing down um, beginning of next year. So <clears throat> that was an EPR. Yeah, it was It was a magic-wielding BR. It kind of felt like they replaced guns with magic, which is kind of cool, right? But uh, 
very huge, huge maps too. It was really nice. Spell, spell break was an interesting idea. It was really cool, but the gimmick wasn't good enough to make it idea. Make it in the flood of BRs. Exactly. Exactly. So they're, they've been shut down. They're being absorbed into the WoW team, uh, which is cool. Which is cool. Um, if you have a meta headset, we're going to zoom through some of these last ones here. If you have a meta headset, there here's a tweet that is a picture of a Facebook post where Mark Zuckerberg says, you won't need a Facebook account login to quest next start next month. We're rolling out new meta accounts so you can use with our VR headsets instead. So if you have a meta based quest headset uh next month you can sign up for a new account and you can you can uh uh you can move all of your games over so you do not lose access to any games you had or purchased or whatever you'll be able to uh take those and merge and and move them over and then disconnect your facebook account can mark spy on our erp through our quest headset yeah it's i mean just keep in mind too it's just it's another login that's gonna live in the meta environment it's just not a forced facebook account i guess <laughs> hi yeah thank you agrimonia how is a how is a meta account better than facebook yeah it doesn't to me it just feels like <laughs> are you gonna watch a stream on your pc or are you gonna watch it on your phone it's still the fucking same stream <laughs> android's like mark don't care about human mating practices ha <laughs> ha their forces meta thing too hard. Well, Meta and Facebook is definitely on the down, right? Like they're not, they're not really, um, it, it like they're not really like uh, growing like they used to at all. So you can name yourself Sweaty Balls Twenty Four if you choose, if you so choose now. Yes, that's right. I forgot you had to re use real names too. It's kind of surprising that you'll be able to detach your Facebook account from your Meta account for Oculus. Yeah, no, that's 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 the whole what's the whole point? I mean, that's that's dope for people that want to do that, right? I mean, you don't want to have your main account. You know, like if you have, you know, do like Declan's friend want Facebook? No, are you kidding me? They don't know anything about Facebook. Declan doesn't know anything about Facebook. He barely knows. He knows about Twitter, but he doesn't really know enough about Twitter. Um, and he knows about YouTube. That's about the most social media ish thing that he that he knows about. Meta account transfer all your Facebook data as you do it. Old people use Facebook. Yeah, old people use Facebook. Okay, all you old guys. Mm hmm. You never use a VR set, probably never will. Why? Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, we got some good news. We got some good news. We got some good news. I'll cut out the bad news. <laughs> we got some good news. Summer games done quick. Charity speed run. Marathon that happens every well, it hasn't happened in a long time now, actually, because of the uh because of the pandemic. First, first show back, uh, and they uh Kill it with $3 million towards Doctors Without Borders. I have the Statistica thing, the statist Statista lineup here to show that, because I was curious. I was like, well, have, they haven't been here for a while, and I wouldn't necessarily say that you know GDQ is like at its peak or anything, but I guess I could be kind of wrong. Uh, it shows here. It says January 2022, they had one, and it was uh, 3.42 million. <coughs> Excuse me. January 2020, 3.1 million that was right before the pandemic excuse me spoiled wrong uh and then this is the current one 3.02 million so huge someone also scammed a run on s oh, really i missed that i saw a list of like worst runs in the history of of gdq there was one I, uh uh i can't remember the name of the game but this guy kept talking about chicken lobotomy or something and he kept hyping up chicken lobotomy as part of his run and everyone thought it was like a hidden boss or something Right, like what I was like a hidden boss or whatever, like, and they watched, and literally it was a scene where it's like a top-down, like pixel art based, like retro-looking uh, uh, um, RPG adventure game, uh, and he just walks over next to a chicken, and the chicken is like pecking the ground, and it looks like he's pecking his head because of where he's positioning his character, like in like kind of like Stardew Valley, you, know, you kind of get close, and it looks, and he starts singing about a chicken lobotomy, and he starts kind of dancing. And that was it. This is part of a live run. His timer's going. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the context was. Everyone was like, that's it? What the fuck? And it was just so bizarre. Uh, but I didn't see anything from this year's yet, though. They played a video with parts cut instead of doing a legit run. Pre-recorded. So they spliced together a run, huh? And they tried to get away with it. <laughs> Busted. Anyways, it was a good, it was a good, good, good. It was a good, it was a good fundraising. Uh, uh, uh event for 
Doctors Without Borders. The only GDQ thing I remember was the one guy who beat Battletoads Turbo Tunnel blindfolded first try. I'm not surprised, but that's fucking rad. Oh my god. How funny. How funny that game was like legendary for being like just the most that that level, I should say, for being just so incredibly impossible. Anyways. I think we're good. I think we're done. GameStop. GameStop staff layoffs. But that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Chat. Kind of a bumpy one today. I appreciate you guys hanging out. You guys are the best. Basically had to memorize that level so it's a good blindfold run. No, what are you doing? <laughs> you heard my voice? Oh, okay. No, I'm I'm, ye I'm yelling at chat, but thank you, but I love you. <laughs> they still have staff. That's the big news. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Fr Friday's Declan's off school summertime. So, you know. <laughs> All right, let's go. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Chat, hang out for a little bit. We'll come back. We're going to bullshit for some. Um, Francis Bannon, eSport Word, and some others. Though. What? Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Okay, you guys. Is it card game news? Oh, crip. We already talked about that. That was part of our sad news update. Chat, say goodbye. Say goodbye, chat. We go now. I'll add the music later. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs>